If there are non-signing parents, this can lead to language deprivation syndrome. The single great risk faced by deaf children is inadequate exposure to a usable first language. Many deaf individuals suffer language deprivation due to late and inadequate exposure to ASL. Why does this happen? 95% of deaf children have hearing parents. 67 to 85 percent of hearing parents choose oral only communication parents say we want him to be like us speech is the top priority three out of 1,000 children are deaf or hard of hearing imagine how many deaf children are deprived research over the last 20 years has shown that sign language accelerates the development of speech and language for hearing children while decreasing disruptive behavior such as tantrums this is called baby sign and is very popular What are professionals telling parents? Parents need to know the consequences of the choices because if you want a child to learn to talk, you must start that very, very young, under age five, and you must educate that child in a system that focuses just on talking. Signing is very quick and it gets language and it gets expression very early. But in my opinion, it in many children inhibits their ability to speak later on, especially the, the children that are more profoundly hearing impaired. So even at the age of one, a deaf child receiving a cochlear implant has a lot of catching up to do. That's why we introduce special teaching methods for deaf children to learn to speak. Now listen again. Listen. Ooh. Listen. Ooh. Oi. Good girl, that's better. Part of working with the child and family would be really um, teaching the parents how important listening is. And we want that child to develop um, the ability to learn language through listening. What do parents report hearing? Well, also, too, a lot of people said. If your child is signing, they will prefer sign over speaking because it's so much easier for a child to sign. And for a deaf child, they have to really work hard at listening. And so if they have to work hard at doing something versus doing something naturally or you know, whatever comes more easily to them, of course the kid's going to choose the easier route. And people would stop us, you know, there were people who, I've worked with deaf children before, or I've worked with children with disabilities, and I, you gotta, I understand why you'd want to sign with her, but you really need to be careful, because she might never talk. As the parent of a two-year-old whose hearing loss was recently diagnosed, the arguments only heightened my anxiety about how to address my son Sam's needs. After his diagnosis, Sam's doctors assumed he would get hearing aids, which he would need for the rest of his life. ASL was not mentioned as an option. One friend, a speech therapist whose brother is deaf, told me not to sign at all with Sam because he would use it as a crutch instead of learning to speak. Although his speech did improve, the frustration I continued to see in his face when he tried to tell me something was heartbreaking. Tantrums were frequent. Sam started coming up with his own signs. He was searching for any way to communicate. Parents are funneled towards making specific choices according to a medicalization script of implantation and spoken language only. 
They are groomed by medical professionals to accept the cochlear implant and speech is their only option, and that parental compliance is very important. Visual languages like American Sign Language are considered unscientific, unhealthy, and compensatory. Do cochlear implants provide a solution for all deaf children? Cochlear implant research finds enormous variability reported in auditory, speech, and language functioning after implantation. Parents are forced to make decisions without any guarantees about the level of benefit their children will receive from having cochlear implants. Do oral children learn to speak? Some do. The colors were hot. Children at CID are instructed entirely in spoken and written English. Sign language is not used. I like peanut butter and bananas. I like peanut butter and bananas. On my sandwich. On my hamburger. On your what? Listen, on your hamburger. On my hamburger. Fossil scorpions date back to 400 million years ago. Scorpions are related to spiders. I want to help students. Yeah. I can't do it. Nice. Yeah. Well done. Some don't. Is that itsy bitsy spider? Are you doing the spider? Thomas, Thomas, the itsy bitsy spider. Cross your hands. This way. You want to come this way? See, it's very tough for Thomas to express himself because he doesn't have a whole lot of words. Not in the middle of the filming. <laughs> do signing children learn to speak? Some do. I grew up using American Sign Language. I didn't learn spoken English until I went to preschool and kindergarten. Even then, I didn't really speak spoken English very well. I will talk and I will sign. My friends will be both deaf and hearing. I will try to share things with both deaf and hearing people. <laughs> I was proud, but we're very deaf which means I could not hear anything but a, a topic bulb, which would be useful a big for that. Otherwise, I get a peaceful night of sleep every night without fail, This is awesome. <laughs> My family is deaf. My parents are deaf. They're also culturally deaf, which means they communicate using sign language. They work in deaf schools. They have deaf friends. They are just totally immersed in that world. I have two younger deaf brothers who are the same way. My first thought when I found out he was deaf was I was never going to hear my son tell me that he loved me. Cheryl immediately started to learn sign language. Hello, my name is um, Thomas Beauty and, and I'm 13 years old. And my favorite thing to do is to play basketball. I understand why you'd want to sign with her, but you really need to be careful because she might never talk. I said, she might never talk anyways. She's deaf. It's not going to be the signing that keeps her from talking. It's deafness. There are a lot of things that delay speech. Signing isn't one of them. Speech delays, <laughs> those delay speech, let me tell you. Deafness and hearing impairments, that delays speech. Autism, Down syndrome, a lot of things delay speech. Signing isn't it. We were told you have to pick one. And you can't switch. And we absolutely like went against that. We like fought it. Um, 
it seemed very obvious that we should sign with her. At seven, Leah got her cochlear implant and has learned to talk and hear since. I honestly think my parents raised me the best way they could have. I, I don't think they could have done it any different. Most deaf children are not so fortunate. They grow up with no signing at home. This leads to language deprivation. What are the lifelong impacts of language deprivation? Julie Rems Smario was born deaf, but she was raised orally. Julie says that her family realized that she had been missing out on something. So when they looked back, they realized they should have learned ASL. That's when my parents realized that Julie, she missed out on an entire lifetime. I couldn't understand my hearing friends, and then I couldn't understand my deaf friends either. So I was a person of no language. That statistic was based off of a study done in 2000 on high school students' SAT scores. So in the back of the head, which we call the occipital cortex or the occipital lobe, it's part of your brain, people who were native signers had a larger or an additional amount of gray matter in their occipital cortex. And that led people who uh, are native fluent speakers, it turns out they also have additional uh, brain matter. It's folks who don't have the L1 that are missing that. So probably what this means is that kids who grow up with parents that name things, you know, that's a chair, that's a book, and so forth, and that includes not only auditory but visual, those types of stimuli stimulate the occipital cortex. And it grows, physically grows. If there's language deprivation, it can shrink. And if there's no stimulation whatsoever, it doesn't grow. 20 to 77 percent of deaf children have been abused due to parents' inability to control them verbally. Right now at 5, a deaf 16-year-old boy is beaten and knocked unconscious. Tonight, his father is charged with the crime. He told police he was just trying to teach his son a lesson. Included knocking the kid to the ground, stomping on the kid, kicking him, striking him numerous times. The father told police he was only trying to discipline his son. Half of deaf children are sexually abused. Due to lack of communication skills, they are easy prey. mental health issues three to ten times higher, particularly anxiety and depression due to stress from inability to communicate. With this deprivation, you would expect a person to exhibit tantrums. And from this experience we decided to measure it officially or formally. We used 98 cases over a three-month period. We measured at what age they were exposed to language. We measured how much of a danger they were to themselves and others. It's unfortunate. However, not surprising. Most adults 
with behavioral issues stem from frustration and lack of language and ability to express themselves. They can't empathize with others. They don't know or care how others are feeling. It's a cognitive issue. Suicide attempts are 6 to 60 times higher than normal due to like frustration caused by lack of communication. Language deprivation is child neglect. Families neglect children's psychological needs and deprive them of language stimulation. Neglect is the persistent failure to meet a child's physical, emotional or psychological needs likely to result in significant harm. It may involve a parent or carer failing to provide adequate food, shelter and clothing, failing to protect a child from physical harm or danger, failing to ensure access to appropriate medical care or treatment, and the lack of stimulation or supervision. Oral only risks language deprivation for all deaf children. Benefits of signing outweigh the perceived risks. Sign language skills correlate positively with reading, writing, and speech skills as well as mental, social, behavioral, and emotional health. In summary, language deprivation occurs when deaf children are not exposed to sign language at an early age. The long-term negative life outcomes can include higher than normal risk of family isolation, communication deficits, educational deficits, diminished brain development, Child abuse, sexual abuse, mental health issues, suicide attempts, language deprivation is child neglect, baby sign and spoken language helps hearing children, ASL and spoken language helps all deaf children regardless of hearing loss. Most parents of deaf children are told that they get one choice in life and that they need to make it right now. ASL or English. We sat down with two deaf women who went against the grain and decided to choose both. Elena Mayer was born deaf to a deaf family. She went to a school to learn how to speak, but she still signed at home. My parents they believed in giving me everything, all of it, all of the skills and all the tools that I'd need. She says that this is what led to her success today. The brain forms 700 new neural connections every second from birth to age 5. Time is